Hello YouTube, this is Matt Pullen, and this position is uh, from a game Gilg vs. Uh, Tartikover in uh, 1926. And it's Rook and 1 vs. Rook and 1. Uh, you're looking from uh, Tartikover's perspective, we're going to be finding his moves. So black is moving up the board, queening square is on e1, and white is moving uh, down the board, queening square is on h8. Uh, so in uh, rook and one versus rook and one, what usually happens is that the inferior side, the side that is losing the race, uh, is trying to give up the rook for the pawn in order to reach a drawn uh, pawn versus rook endgame. And during the course of this, we're going to look at three possible ways that could happen, three possible rook versus pawn ending endings. But first, let me ask you, you're black, your pawn is one square you know, from the end of the board. Um, a lot of uh, beginner players would just queen this pawn, you know, trade the pawn for the white rook, you know, without thinking twice. But is that really best in this position? Uh, do you think uh, that Tartikover played e1 queen, or did he play another move? What happens if black queens this pawn? See if you can figure it out. Okay, so let's look at e1 queen. E1 queen, uh, obviously rook takes is forced, and king takes, and th this is what I'll call rook versus pawn A. Uh, rook versus pawn A, uh, white now, he can't move his king onto the g-file, you know, because of the influence of the black rook. So he just, he has to trudge forward with his king and pawn. King, pawn, king, 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 pawn. And here it is uh, black's move. If it were white's move, white would be stalemated because there are no squares on the g file to move the king to. So black on the move plays king g7, interrupting his own rook. So this gives white some uh, squares to move his king to. After king g7, however, uh, there's, no, uh, there's no way to prevent white from safely getting a queen on h8. The best uh, black can do here is draw. So, uh, that is rook versus pawn uh, endgame A. Uh, this position is a draw. Alright, so let's look at the move Tartikover actually played. He played rook to g1. Rook g1 uh, challenges the white rook for uh, dominion over the last rank. If white were to just trade rooks, uh, say rook takes, king takes, uh, I mean Tartikover uh, calculated this out to be a win because, uh, hmm, how to explain this? Well, I, you've heard that queens uh, draw against rook pawns, right? Well. Uh, that is true, however, uh, that assumes that the pawn is able to reach the 7th rank without incident. On the 6th rank is always a win for the queen. For instance, here, uh, black has to put white in check, otherwise this pawn is going to reach the 7th rank. Uh, any check will win. Uh, this is the most direct, queen e5 check. And if, say, king g6, then black plays queen h8. Anytime the queen blockades the pawn, there's nothing that the pawn and king can do. The, uh, the black king is just going to march in and decide matters. So, I mean, white has to move his king to one of these squares in order to prevent the, uh, the queen from blockading in the corner. So say king h7, now queen g5. And now white's only legal move, king h8, leads to uh, queen takes h6 check you know, losing the pawn and winning the game. So notice here, in this position, if this row didn't exist, uh, this would be a stalemate, and uh, it'd be a draw. But the fact that the pawn is on the sixth rank makes this uh, Zugzwang possible. Uh, okay, so king g8, then queen g5 check, forking the uh, king and pawn. So this king move is forced, then black just burns a move with his king and then wins the pawn. So yeah, this, this end game after rook takes g1, king takes, the queen versus the uh, h-pawn on the sixth rank is uh, a win for the queen. So after rook g1, white plays rook a2, preventing the pawn from queening by pinning it to the, uh, to the king. So uh, Tartikover unpins the pawn. 
And uh, 11 fish and speed slow of right. Now rook takes pawn will no longer save white. Well, let's verify that. Uh, let's play rook takes pawn, king takes. And now this is rook versus pawn B. Compare it to rook versus pawn A, which was this. The black king was one rank further back. So what difference does the tempo make? Let's see. King, king, pawn, king, 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 pawn. All right, so here, again, uh, the white king will be stalemated. So black plays king g6, giving the king a square by interrupting his own rook. So king g8, now rook a1. And this, this is the critical idea. Uh, this works because the white king is on the back rank. Uh, if the pawn is queened, then is, is checkmate. The queen is on the board, but she is powerless. Uh, white can delay the inevitable by promoting to a knight for check, keeping himself out of checkmate. After king f6, though, uh, the thing about rook versus knight Rook versus knight, even if the king is on the edge of the board, is usually a draw with good play. However, there are positions where the knight is in or near the corner that are lost, and this is one of them. Uh, I've highlighted all of the uh, all of White's legal moves in this position after king f6. Uh, all right, this one just gets mated. This one loses the knight for nothing. Uh, if the knight goes to f7, then just rook check, winning the knight. So let's look at king h7. Now, can you find the most efficient way to win for black? Rook to g1. Now there are only three legal moves for white. Uh, these moves just lose the knight straight away, and this one gets mated by rook h1. So that is, uh, that is death for the knight in the corner. All right, so so we saw that rook takes uh, because the king is one square further forward. Rook and pawn versus uh, rook versus pawn b is a win. So instead, white just decides to uh, shower his opponent with checks. King g4, rook a4 check. And now, uh, what would you do uh, to free yourself from the checks? Uh, do you think uh, do you think black you know chased down the white rook? You know, to stop the checks, or did he do something else like try and you know hide from checks in the corner, you know, by blocking with his rook? Well, uh, let's see what happens if King f5. See the checks. Uh, all right, so now the checks are prevented. So the king, I mean the rook, comes behind the pawn, threatening it. So uh, Black has to do something not to lose his pawn. So say he queens, takes, takes. This is rook versus pawn endgame C. And here, you know, king g7, king c6, pawn, king, pawn, rook g1, check. And now king h8. Here the black king is simply too far away to do anything. Uh, pretty much any move, you know, is stalemate because uh, of the rook on the g file. If the rook comes off the g file, then black, j white just comes up and threatens to queen. So this is a draw because the black king was too far away. So, uh... In response to the check, the king, uh, Tartico will actually play king g3, and then rook a3 check, king h4, rook a4 check, rook g4. Now, if the rook trade, then you know this pawn is going to queen and is is a win, as we saw earlier. So instead, rook a1 was played uh, by Gilg, and the idea is simply you know you got to prevent the queen somehow. Now Black played the rook behind the uh, passed pawn. And if white just does something uh, like you know, rook e1 to blockade the pawn, preventing it from queening, then rook e6 check, forcing the white king away from this pawn, and, and which is, is an easy win after the white pawn falls. So uh, instead, white played rook h1, putting black in check. So rook g4, rook g1 check, king f5, and now the checks cannot continue because this pawn is attacking the square that the rook wants to check on. So white just blockaded, you know, preventing the pawn from queening. Now, see if you can find black's best move. King f6. King f6, this rook can't move uh, anywhere. No good rook moves. Any rook move and the pawn will queen. 
So the only other move, you know, king h7, now king g5, black threatens to take the pawn. Only way to save the pawn is by pushing it. Now rook e7, check, forcing the king away from the pawn. King g8, king takes h6, now king f8, rook e3, the rook moves as far away from the king as possible. Now white has to try and race to the rescue with his king, because his rook is in a very bad position in front of the passed pawn. Uh, king f7 and king g5, wow, all these squares are cut off. The white king can't do anything, and black is just going to rush in and take control of the queening square. Well, that was the end game of uh, Gilg versus Tartikover, and it showed how uh, a variety of uh, rook versus pawn endgames can be reached from you know rook and one versus rook and one, and how mastering this type of endgame you know, requires you to accurately evaluate all the rook versus pawn possibilities. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.